Hi, my name is Diane Schuster, and you're watching one of a series of videos that demonstrate the capabilities of Cozy Rock's SSIS Plus, which is a software suite of tasks and components for SQL Server integration services. These demonstrations were built using SQL Server Integration Services 2012. The Cozy Rock tasks and components are available in both 32-bit and 64-bit editions. For more information, please visit www.cozyrock.com. In this video, we're going to talk about Data Flow Task Plus, which is an SSIS control flow task, and it's an extension of the standard Microsoft Data Flow Task. If you haven't already watched the basics video about Data Flow Task Plus, I highly recommend that you watch it before you watch this video. I explain things in that video that I won't be explaining here. And the package that I'll be building here is based upon some of the concepts that we talked about in the basics video. Some of the differences between this demonstration and the one in the basics video are that in the basics video we used flat files, and here we're using Excel files. And in the basics demo, I used a different SQL Server table for each of the flat files, whereas in this demo, I'll be using a single SQL Server table, and I'll write all the data from all the Excel files into it. Here's what our Excel files look like now. The country's Excel file has only two columns in it, whereas the other two Excel files have three columns. To make it more realistic, I also used a different worksheet name in each Excel file and each Excel file has a different set of columns in it. Dataflow Task Plus will dynamically adapt to handle different columns in each Excel file, as well as different numbers of columns in each Excel file. And it will transfer the data from all of them to a single SQL Server table. That means our SQL Server table has all the possible columns in it, and only the columns that are in the Excel file being processed at the time will be copied into the table. Before I start configuring the package, I want to show you what the worksheet table looks like. And as you can see, we have the name of the Excel file, and then we have the name of the worksheet next to it. And we'll be using this table to look up the worksheet name for each Excel file as we're processing it. And now we'll start the configuration of the package. I've already set up the variables, and the first one is directory, and that's uh, the full file path that points at the folder where all the Excel files are. And then we have file ext, which indicates that all of the Excel files should be processed in the folder. And then we have file location, which actually consists of the two variables directory and file name to indicate a specific file in the folder. And then we have the file name, which contains just the name of the Excel file and will be updated each time we go through the for each loop. And then we have the table name, and of course everything is going into one table, which is named Commodity Transactions. And finally we have Worksheet Name, which will be updated for each of the Excel files. I've already done the initial configuration of the Connection Managers, but we need to complete the configuration by editing the properties. So I right-mouse click on the OLADB Connection Manager first, and click on Properties. And we always need to change delay validation to true. You must do this in order for your package to work if you're using Data Flow Task Plus, because the metadata will only be valid during execution. And now we'll go in and edit the properties of the Cozy Rock Excel Plus Connection Manager. And again, here we set delay validation to true. And since we're processing Excel files, it's very important that we set retain same connection to false. If we left it set to true, we would process the same Excel file every time through the for each loop. We also need to set up an expression for the Excel file path property. So we find the Excel file path property. and the expression will simply consist of the file location variable, which points at one of the Excel files in the folder. Now we'll work on the control flow canvas, and we start with the for each loop container. And we're gonna change the name to loop through Excel files. And we'll leave the enumerator set to for each file enumerator. And we need to set up a couple of expressions here. So we go to the directory property, 
and the expression for that consists of the directory variable. And then we'll set up the file spec property and the expression for that consists of the file ext variable. And we select name only because we'll be using just the file name to look up the worksheet name. And the variable that will get updated each time through the loop is the file name variable. Now we'll drag the execute SQL task into the for each loop container. And we're going to use it to get the worksheet name from the SQL Server table I showed you earlier. And we set result set to single row. And we set up the connection manager. And I already had the SQL statement configured, so I just paste that in there. Now we need to set up our parameter mapping. So I'll make these bigger so you can see what we're actually working with here in the columns. And we'll be using the file name to do the lookup of the worksheet name. And we set nvercare as the data type. And we only had one question mark in our SQL statement, so it's the first one. So we put a zero in the parameter name. Now we'll go configure the result set. And worksheet name is the name of the column that we're extracting from the table. And of course, we'll be putting that in our worksheet name variable. Now we'll drag Dataflow Task Plus into the 4-H loop container. And of course, this is the star of this demo video. And we'll rename it Move Data from Excel Files to SQL Table. And as you can see, there's nothing to configure here yet. We'll come back to this after we configure the components in the data flow. So first, we'll set up the Excel Source Plus component from Cozy Rock to read the Excel files. And we set up the Connection Manager. And then we choose the worksheet, which is named Tax Rates. And that's the name of the worksheet in the Excel file named Countries. And we'll set the width to minus 1 so that it reads as many columns as there are in each Excel spreadsheet. And as you can see, there's two columns, and those are the ones in the Countries uh, Excel file. So we're going to have to make that dynamic. And we're going to complete the configuration by going to the Advanced Editor, we go to Component Properties, and we set Validate External Metadata to False. Again, this is something you must do in order to get the package to work when you're using Dataflow Task Plus. And now we go to Column Mappings, and there's those two columns again that we need to get rid of. So we go to Input and Output Properties, and we expand the external columns as well as the output columns. And we'll get rid of the country, and then we'll change the tax rate column to our thunk underscore column in all capital letters. We'll do the same thing under output columns. Go look at the column mappings again, and now you can see we have thunk column mapped to thunk column. And there's one more thing we need to do. So right mouse click on the canvas and go to Properties. And you can see this property here called read Excel file dot worksheet. We're going to need to set that up to use an expression. So we scroll down and we find expressions. And we go in and find the property with that name, read Excel file dot worksheet. And we use the worksheet name variable as that expression. And now we use the OLEDB destination component to write data to the table.
and we'll use a variable for the table name and of course that variable is called table name and we'll go to the mappings and you can see that's not going to work so we'll close this and we'll use the advanced editor we right mouse click on the component and select show advanced editor and we go to component properties and I can't stress enough how important it is to set validate external metadata to false when you use Dataflow Task Plus. And we'll go to column mappings and we have to get rid of those extra columns that show up in the database table. So we go to input and output properties. We expand the external columns and get rid of all of these extra columns and we'll change the last one to thunk underscore column. And we'll go back and look at the column mappings again. And now we have thunk column mapped to thunk column. And now we can expand our input columns and thunk column shows up. And we're going to need to change the length so that it matches to avoid getting a warning. So the length is 250 for both the external and input columns now. And I'll take a quick look at the destination error output and we don't have any extra columns showing up there but even if we did you don't need to remove them. So we're done with the configuration of this component. Now we'll go back to the control flow so we can complete the configuration of Dataflow Task Plus and we click on the dynamic tab and now we'll enable dynamic capabilities for both of the components that we just set up and I just want to point out this orange tab here that says expand options. We don't need any of those options, but I just wanted you to be aware that it's here. And that's all there is to configuring Dataflow Task Plus. Now I'm going to set up a breakpoint so that we can see the file name and worksheet name variables as they change going through the for each loop. And now we can execute the package. And now it's paused with a file name of commodities by date and worksheet name of prices. And now countries and tax rates. And finally delivered commodities and shipments. So we'll stop debugging. And we'll take a look at the results and we can see there's no warnings and no errors. And now we'll go look at the contents of the table. And as I scroll down, you can see that there's three different sets of data that were stored in the table based on the Excel file that was being processed at the time. In this demonstration, I showed you how to use CozyRock's Dataflow Task Plus to set up dynamic data flows. I transferred data from Excel files to a single SQL Server table where the Excel files contained different sets of columns and a different number of columns. They also had different worksheet names. I accomplished this without using different data flows for each transfer. Changes to the metadata were accommodated at runtime, greatly reducing the need to manually modify the data flow design when new source and destination columns must be handled. This task comes in a library of tasks and components called SSIS Plus that complements the standard SSIS. And that concludes this demo.